It is with nothing but enormous pleasure that we bring you the Thursday night edition of Game On, coming to you live from the studios of News Central Television. My name is Babatunde Koiki. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, together with me and my team, we bring you all the breaking, latest, hottest stories from across the world of sports. We have an absolutely special edition for you today. We'll be talking about some unusual sports that many of you are not particularly used to. You probably only watch it uh, on cable TV. I'm talking about motorsports. Uh, a motorsport expert will be with us right here in the studio to talk about the development of the game, the challenges, and the future uh, for especially in Nigeria and possibly even the African continent. Welcome once again. Don't forget, this show is streaming live on YouTube, and you can also join us using our social media handles, Facebook, X, Instagram, and of course, you know the handle is at News Central TV, and I promise you, I give you a firm promise, very soon we'll bring back the phone line so we can have our fans from, well, viewers, I beg your pardon, from uh, anywhere in the world, join in with the conversation. I'm not doing the show alone. Uh, in my far right is Favor Itwa, looking very much like a military official in civilian <laughs> clothing. Uh, Favor, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, yes, uh, good evening to you, Baba Tudeko I mean, an uh, interesting time. And one thing to note is the fact that we have showers of blessing right here in Lagos, Nigeria. So, yeah, so it's a very rainy Lagos night, but uh, you know what, uh, according to what Favor said, it's showers of blessing. Uh, it's showing his religious uh, non-DSS uh, part of him. <laughs> also joining us now is uh, another good friend of the house. He's always here. Uh, big man with big opinions. Wale Adegun is also here as well. Wale? Yeah. Barely made it to the studio, but thank you very oh, much. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm switched on on Game On. <laughs> <laughs> that has been the corniest line I've heard in the last few, last few weeks. But thank you again for joining us. It's going to be a great, great show. So without further ado, let's start with some great news coming out of the African Games. The 13th edition is currently going on in Accra, Ghana. Uh, while Nigeria is not leading the medals table, it must be said uh, we are doing very, very, very well. Don't forget that we were second. Uh, on the log in Rabat in, 19, in uh, 20, uh, 2019, and we're not doing too badly in 2023. We're doing pretty well, and today was just another harvest of medals. Let's quickly get you up to speed with what has happened today. We can tell you that Ese Brume has won the women's long jump event at the African Games. She won uh, with just her first attempt, uh, soaring to 6.9 meters. That was enough to nail the win, defending her title that she won in 2019. Uh, and uh, in second place was Burkina Faso's Kuala Mate, who won the silver. But how about this for Prestina Ochonogo, uh, an athlete I first saw in Asaba just a few weeks ago. This is her first competition international competition for Nigeria and she walks away with a bronze medal guys uh, that has to be really impressive first time competing for Nigeria 6.62 uh, 62 meters uh, no I beg your pardon that's Ruth Usoro I beg your pardon who, who was also uh, who is also who was also competing don't forget she won the women's triple jump event but she couldn't do repeat that in the women's long jump event she came fourth but uh, Prestina Chonogo claimed silver uh, with a jump of 6.67 meters. That is heartwarming favor on her first international uh, uh, well, competition for Nigeria. Yeah, fantastic one for Prestina Ochonogo. I mean, uh, she has shown that she can actually uh, dare to dream. I mean, mm. she coming to this tournament with little or no, ex no experience compared to... Internationally. Internationally, compared to the likes of Ace Brume and amongst uh, and others. Soro, yeah. forgetting Ruth Soro. I think for her, she would just... She, this is a big one for her. She's really enjoying the moment. And one thing is key, especially for the Nigeria Athletics Federation, is the fact that we can also build from where, wherever S.A. Bremen stores. It means that we can as well say that we have an athlete that would you know, go up the ladder and then push, or maybe S.A. Bremen the next um, few international tournaments and run for our money. But I think she needs more exposure, more competitions. But this goes on to show that we have lots of indigenous uh, talents right here in, right in, in Nigeria, Nigeria that yeah. we are here to harness and discover. Not even about just discovering them, but harnessing the talent to bring in the best out of them. I remember in Se Mabonguko at the 2018 National Sports Festival in Abuja, in Abuja the revived one, mm. she was gambled by the Akwai Bomb State Government to represent the Akwai Bomb State. She the gambled? National. In the sense that she was less than 16. Mm. At that time, she had just finished competing from the, uh, at the National Youth, Youth, Youth Games. Games yeah. So in, even I remember... President Chonogu, I think, also competed at the National, National Youth Games, Games as well. I remember the Minister of Sports saying then, uh, the uh, Minister also saying that we should not, you know, take Insei Mabong to the National Sports Festival. But she was 
taken to the National Sports Festival, and she defeated the likes of Yika Ajayi mm. in the 400 meters women's uh, final. That was an upset, and that was how her career, you know, picked up. And all, all on then she went on to win it the next time again, and now she's in the United States of America. Yeah. So who knows? Pressing so Pressing also follows you know, suit follow as suit well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, she's still based in Nigeria. She's uh, she showed tremendous promise. Like I said, I saw at the uh, AFN trials in Asaba just a few weeks ago. She won the women's long jump event. Now she's followed that up with um, with, with a bronze medal at the Continental uh, Competition. It can only serve to make her hungrier. It can also yeah. put her in the radar for possibly uh, I, 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 what's going to uh, scholarship to any of the yeah, NCA colleges yeah. in North America. We continue to produce these athletes, but like somebody said a few days ago on the show, finding athletes is not the problem. It's developing them. And Deji actually said that. Mm. Uh, Deji Ogengbo. Deji Ogengbo. Atlanta, and yeah. it's, that's what we're saying. I was speaking with him earlier today, and, and he said, see, what we have is, is quantity in depth. It's not quality yet, because it can only be quality once we start annexing them, once they start getting We start exposed. polishing them, yeah. we start giving but what them... what the African Games has shown is that there is depth. Mm. Uh, because we've also come into this tournament, we probably, or this competition, we probably are Class B or Class C athletes. Mm. And see what they're doing, see what yeah. they're up to. We've blended them with a bit of experience from Toby Amusa and the rest. And they've come to the party, but this is not where it ends. You know, and um, we've discovered them. But what is the next step? Because trust me, most of these athletes we've seen in Ghana are not going to Paris. That's the truth. Yes, very a true. A lot of them are not going to Paris. So what happens between now and the next Olympic Games? And the next Commonwealth it, Games. Winning an Olympic medal is not a three-month journey. No. It's a four-month, it's a four-year journey. Some say eight. Some even say eight. So if we're really serious about this crop of athletes who are also young, that's a crucial thing. Yeah. A lot of them are young. If we're very serious, I think that the Ministry of Sports, private, you know, um, the entity also has to come in here. Mm. Uh, because you like it or not, the very best way to get these athletes to, to the highest level standard mm. is abroad. Mm. That's the truth. They have to go abroad. They don't have the facilities here. So if we're ready, then we start investing in this athlete. Okay. Uh, Favor, you have updates from the African Games. Some events were also completed just a few minutes ago. Yes, of course. Uh, women's discourse. I mean, Nigeria have also won gold in that particular one. Oh, wow. Surprisingly, uh, Chum Obiagiri Amechi, yes, she's been doing well in the women's discourse. But before now, the uh, lady that was tipped to win this particular one was, of course, Chum Onyekwere. Mm. But she was able to, you know, go with a jump of 58.93 uh, throw, throw, yeah. meters. To that's an upset, That's right? an upset to surpass 58.03 thrown by Choma Onyekwere. That's a big upset, especially knowing that Choma Onyekwere won the last gold medal yeah. for about 2019 mm. games. So it goes on to show that even the Nigerian athletes born outside of the country are also doing a lot in the, in the, in the uh, field event. I mean, we've seen also in short put. Now we're having lots of women compete in the women's uh, discourse. That shows that uh, we're so, really taking the field by storm. Yeah, quality in depth, like uh, Wally, Wally and uh, DJ also alluded to as well. But uh, let's quickly tell you that yesterday was a really great day for Nigeria as well. It was gold in the men's 4 by 100 meters, uh, 4 by 100 meters event. Gold again in the women's 4 by 100 meters event. A lot of talk have been coming back and forth from Ghana that, yes, they are going to upstage Nigeria, but that was never going to happen. Uh, the Nigeria's men's 4 by 100 team comprising of Israel Okun, Consider Ekanem, Alaba Kitola, and Ushio Rishi Ishekiri uh, battled against Ghana, left it all on the track, annihilated the opposition, and they also won that uh, particular event in stunning fashion, crossing the line in 38.41 seconds. Uh, Ushio, uh, Ishekiri, uh, Ushio Rishi Ishekiri now adds to the silver medal he won yeah. in the men's 100 meters, but look at that, those Nigerians go. It was just a beautiful, beautiful scene to watch uh, Wale. No, any surprises for you that uh, Nigeria won this? Because no, the fact no. that we know we've been switching back and forth with other countries as well, but it was a photo finish. Nigeria just about edging it on the line. We've always bossed this this event. Mm. Um, I think is it the men's or the women's? We've won it's the women. We've 13. won eleven straight. Yeah, eleven straight. Eleven straight. And this is the thirteenth edition of the <laughs> it's games. It's our birthright. So, mm. Yeah, it's something like our birthright, like like you've said. Uh, but this was them also making it up to us because of what happened in the one hundred meters. Okay. Uh, we lost the hundred meters men's. Uh, we lost 100 meters mm -hmm. women to Gina Bass. So they had to make it up. And mm. they did it in very convincing fashion. I'm happy for the guys, though. Ushiri Shakiri is someone who I think has got plenty of promise. But as far as I'm concerned, hasn't delivered yeah, hasn't much. Up to it, yeah. uh, there's plenty of promise in there. So this was a good sign. Um, consider Ekanem is someone I've been very curious about. He you just know? burst out of the limelight just yeah. uh, just last uh, last year. Yeah, and, um, and he's was, grown in leaps yeah, and bounds. Yeah. You, you can see his growth, steady growth. 
and you want to see this bunch kept together. And um, for the women as well, lovely. So we almost led them to. Yeah, let, uh, let's, to uh, let's talk about that one as well. That was, of course, talk about Nigeria winning uh, 11 straight women's 4 by 100 meter title. Uh, Toby Amuson anchoring Nigeria to victory, uh, winning that in a time of 43.05 seconds as well. Like, uh, like Favor alluded to, I mean, it seems like it's uh, Nigeria's uh, medal to lose. Oh, yeah. It's, 11 it's, times yeah. out of 13 editions. Yeah, we've got quality in there. And um, it's something that is historical for us. It's, it's what um, Jose Mourinho used to call heritage, right? Mm. He called the football it is athletics heritage for us. And we didn't, we didn't disappoint at all. And we're never at risk. That was the interesting thing about this race. We're never at risk. It was convincing. And there was a good vibe around the bunch of athletes in this, in this yeah, scrum. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, Toby Amosu had already won gold in um, the Odos. Um, Omola, I think Omola was part of it. Yeah. yeah she had a fantastic race coming from the dead against um, the Botswana. Botswana, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there was a feel-good factor, you know, around this um, bunch of athletes. And um, I'm really happy that they could get gold for us. Uh, also, just to add to what uh, Wale Adigo has said, I think we are going away from, yes, we know there's a favor of feeling in the United States of America. <laughs> we have crop of talent. Before now, Grace Wonkocha, who was, of course, banned from the sport, yeah. not also forgetting, um, you know, one of the athletes I'm trying to remember at the moment. So when you look at these athletes, not in this competition, it shows that we can as well build, for, build another crop of you know, athletes that, that are competing in the women's 100 meter. Now we're having Olajide Omotayo. She's currently in the women's 200 meter finals. Mm. That means uh, she's also doing a lot for herself. This is also a big one for her and a big yeah, stage it's, for it's her. It's looking so, like it could be another Gina Bass one to gold, <laughs> but, gold and but, silver. But and, as well, we can also look and at the gold positive. In the and not yeah. also forgetting the, the, uh, this athlete that represented Lagos State at the National Sports Festival. It's a bigger one. Also, she, she went to the Olympics, last Olympics. I mean, we've gone away from those, these athletes. We are now in another... Uh, category. Yes, they are not in the Olympics, but we can also say in the next few years, if they get the right exposure, they can do it. This is also a, a career call for the Nigerian Athletics Federation. Yes, they focus on the foreign athletes, especially when they go out of the country to participate. But when you look at the home-based athletes, except for a part, private bodies that you know organize you know athletics meet for them, we don't really have much of this in Nigeria mm. to help them prepare. And on the last few months, we've seen private bodies coming to say we have an athletics event, come participate. What is the Nigeria Athletics Federation doing to ensure that these athletes back here who do not have money to go abroad, you know, also have the opportunities to compete? So, well, so, well, hold on. He, he yeah. raises a major, major question yeah. regarding the fact that there are not enough domestic competitions for these athletes to compete in and to continue to hone their skills. Yeah, and that's what Jamaica have thrived on over time. You know, lots of competitions at school level, at college level. There are lots of competitions for them to always, you know, test themselves. And we, we only have to rely on making of champions. That's the only race or that's the only organization. Well, no, no. I mean, there are a few others. No, there's, well, I think there's dynamic but, but as well. But you remember the time two. when Mobile used to be big then? Yeah, the, the... yeah. No, I, no, what I'm talking about, it, it, there should be a calendar, a consistent oh, yeah. level... Uh, series of events, maybe one every, one every month, one every two months or so, so they, that these athletes can compete so in. So does the AFM spread look across like an organized you know, body? See, if you are organized, is when... Does the AFM even have a website? I was When Dr. Sid was here a couple of days ago, I was saying that they are the only sports federation who have a very detailed website. Even the NFF talks about it. The NFF will disagree. No, they, will, they will disagree. But have you seen, have you seen Nesfed's website? It is well detailed. So mm. even if you have a website like this, you'll be able to say, okay, there's a calendar for these uh, are the archives, these the are videos, stuff like that. Yeah. We don't have that even we at have the a database. Mm. You know, there's no database as well. So, and you make a very good point. If they were meet every month or every three months, it helps these athletes, you know, gain that competitive edge. They get stay in shape. Of, yeah, stay in shape. It's very crucial for them. Mm. They're but, not with African games and what's left. But, but, but Favor, uh, we've talked about even having competitions. But we've not even mentioned facilities. Do we have the yeah. requisite facilities yeah. across Nigeria capable of staging these? I, I've, wor yeah. I've worked very closely with Bacon of Champions. And I can tell you, as a matter of fact, they struggle, struggle to find facilities of the highest possible caliber where they can stage Athletic events. The 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 most of them are. Most of the tracks are gone. The most of the tracks are gone. The track. We don't even have. I was in Asaba 2018 for the African Athletics Championship. Yeah. I remember the track was refurbished to host the African Athletics Championship. Guess what? It was not recognized at the end of the day, despite oh. the fact that Casa Semeya came to Niger came to Nigeria and the big athletes Jose Talu, Ahore. But it was not recognized because of the facility we had. The quality but of the track in Asaba was very questionable back then. But they said they fixed it, and I did see it. In, I did uh, see it. I don't uh, think any particular, uh, any, any of the races run in that uh, world, that African Championships were ratified by. It was not ratified. Asaba is not even enough. Even if Asaba is up to, up to speed, 
pass up by loan is not enough. Well, there's the Samuel Bumiria Stadium, there's the National Stadium yeah, in Abuja, which needs a bit of work. Stadium. The Gozulak Pabio International Stadium, it seems to be the best one right now, but it's just a major call. I think both of you have situated it properly. One, we don't have enough competitions, and two, we don't even have enough facilities for us to stage these competitions. And three, there's also the question of funding as well. How much does it take to actually put together a decent athletic meet whereby everyone can be involved, both the AFL, both the athletes, and people like Nicknot Champions will tell that it costs quite a tremendous oh, yeah. amount of money. So, there, there are so many feeding, things. Feeding the federations. Oh, yeah. So I the, wanted yeah. to quickly ask you, I mean, the 200 meters, men, women, I think we've got into the finals. Yeah, so yeah. Or, or, like, or, uh, if we don't, if we make it look like what happened in the 100 meters, how would you, what would you make of athletics for us at the end of this this me of, the, of this competition. You are the guest. You answer the question. No, no, because see, we've not, you are the athletics. You're also an athletic. Because we've not done well in the relays, but we've not done well in the 100 in meters. In the individual events. Yeah, so mm. I think it's very important. No, I, we, I won think it's very important. we won the men's quarter mile, the 400 meters. So that's not bad. That's something to take, but, take but home as well. But whereby, or the events whereby, uh, when you talk about the big guns in Africa, a lot of them did not even participate. Very true. Less, yes. uh, the likes of uh, Ferdinand Omayala, yeah, mm. uh, don't forget yeah. Saban, uh, Let's Akani Sibide, amongst others, Leslie Tebogo. So you can you also ask questions and you know imagine that this should have been an opportunity for the local based athletes, especially from Nigeria. We all know that we have you know the strength when it comes to short distance race. We should be able to do a lot in that particular one. So it calls for concern. And while we are also clamoring and asking questions. The Athletics Federation uh, president is all smiles, saying that they've done well, they've done extremely well. And then you ask yourself a question, how well has Nigeria really done in the world of athletics, whereby we have lots and lots of uh, you know, events, especially from the just concluded National Sports Festival from different states. What happened to the athletes discovered at the National Sports Festival and the National Youth Games? Okay. Well, guys, uh, let's move away from athletics and talk boxing now because Nigeria has been doing really, really well uh, at the Africa Games in boxing. Eleven boxers were at the Africa Games representing Nigeria. Believe it or not, as at this moment where we speak, eight of them have qualified for the final of the boxing event in different categories. Yesterday, Zaina Badeshino, Joy Ojo, Mbata Patricia, Omole Dolakpo, and Olari Adams all won their semi-final bouts yesterday. Uh, today, we can tell as a matter of fact that Cynthia Ogushemilori also defeated the uh, Kelif Hajila of Algeria, 4-1 to one in the 60-kilogram category. Blessing Orakwe also defeated Ibn Zina Eya of Tunisia uh, in the 70-kilogram category. Referee had to stop that contest because it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was pretty much one-sided just to prevent uh, something untoward. Uh, Shukura Karim also defeated Amina Marta Faki of Kenya. Referee had to stop that one as well because it was also very one-sided. looked as if it was going to be something else. But later on tonight, we're looking uh, towards... Ifani Onyekwere in the 92 kilogram category for the men. Uh, he'll be taking on Anthony Lazar Imana Bueluzei of the DRC. But gentlemen, looking at this, I'm just giddy with, with excitement. Last, at the last Africa Games, Nigeria won just one gold, one silver, and five bronze medals. Now we have eight, eight, finalists. eight finalists, which means the least we can get at this level now is at least... Eight, eight silver medals. But I'm just hoping that some of these athletes, some who have already qualified for the Olympic Games, will probably make it a much better show than we did in Rabat. Wally? Yeah, but I'm not sure about the Olympic Games. I think out of 18 Africans who have no, we qualified, have four, we have four, three, no, we have four Nigerians who have, who have qualified already. Qualified already. So that's, that's good news there. But I'm happy for um, the boxers. If there's any realistic chance of us making the gap between us and Egypt, respectable. Mm. It's going to come from boxing because trust me, I see eight gold medals here. I don't even see eight silver medals. Amen, I, to, the, amen yeah, to that. I, I think I see eight gold medals here and that's, that's you know, um, testament to how great they've been. They're also sharp. There's a couple of them have just been coming back from Italy, mm. um, from that um, Olympic qualifier where yeah. they couldn't pick, you know, the tickets. They were not the only one, Wally. Yeah, no, no. There were 68 boxers yeah, from, from different Africa, African countries who are competing for 49 yeah, tickets. I'm Nobody I'm won anyone. Go only, single out Nigeria. I'm only situated this, that they are, they are sharper than a couple of boxers here. And they also have a chance of picking those tickets in Thailand. Yeah, I think after, there's another qualifier um, in Thailand. After this um, um, African Games. But... Um, from Bata, I'm very much delighted for her. She's been knocking on the door um, of stardom. Uh, Cynthia also has been around the block for a, for a while as well. So um, kudos to them, but they need that one final push. And that one final push is striking gold. Well, uh, Favor, you look at this performance and you, you have to admit, it's impressive. It's very impressive. You took 11 boxers to a competition. Eight of them are in the final. It could be nine. It could be nine. nine I mean, that's, in my opinion, that's a major pass mark. 
a yeah, major pass mark uh, for the uh, boxers, especially uh, looking at how they've been able to attack this one. Don't forget, some of them, of course, have gotten exposures before now, especially for Cynthia. She won bronze at the Commonwealth Games 2022 and the light uh, featherweight. And she's been, you know, doing so well for herself. And now she's in the finals. So you expect her to go take a step further to win gold. Uh, looking at also what has happened in the Boxing Federation in the last few months. Don't forget, there have been issues with Omar yes, Dike, yeah, the Federation crisis. Yeah. I think that did not, you know, really affect the athletes. And also, who knows, maybe the likes of Anthony Joshua might just be an inspiration to these athletes, you know, looking at the fact that we have lots of boxers going pro. Very and true. Some of them might be so ambitious to want to, you know, make name for themselves mm -hmm. and go on to represent at the Olympic standard. Don't forget, uh, Anthony Joshua, Efi Ajagba also yeah. went through the ranks Olympians, to the Olympics yeah. before they turned pro. Mm. Maybe this time around, we'll not have much of them going down like that. They'll just take it a step at a time. But it's really, really good for Nigeria. I mean, sports like boxing, it shows that people in Bariga, they're not wasting their time. <laughs> but and no, it could, hold on, it could have been yeah. 10. Well, they actually could have been 10. Oh, okay. uh, it could have been 10 boxers. Uh, there, there was a major, major controversy at the games where uh, Nigeria's light middleweight uh, Yakubu Ibrahim uh, competed against uh, Morocco's El Babari Hamza. Uh, that one, it clearly seems to have finished on, uh, in favor of the Nigeria where uh, three judges gave it to him uh, while two also gave it in favor of the Moroccan. It seemed like a split decision, but incredibly, the decision was overturned. The uh, organizer added two more boxers who eventually gave it uh, in favor of the that's, that's strange. Of, in favor of the Moroccan. I've that's never strange. seen anything happen like that. The Nigeria Boxing Federation protested. Uh, nobody knows exactly what happened, but they eventually gave the result to the, box, uh, to the Moroccan 4-3 in his favor. And now is how Yakub Ibrahim was knocked out. And you know what this means? It, it continues to stoke the fire of how corrupt the sport has been. And allegedly. Been struck, no, it's been struggling. Allegedly. No, this has not been uh, alleged. Boxing was struck out of the Olympic Games. Yes. At the point in time. Yes. And why? So, it was because so, of widespread corruption. Yeah, and some also say because of um, issues regarding um, the, the management and but also... The major, the, the, major, the major factor here has been cases of alleged corruption Thank you. going on with officiating, mm. you know, um, at, at global level, at every scale. And this is really, really startling. Also, there's uh, also some, some talk about, the, you know, the politics of the game. But, the president of the uh, IBA also being Russia. I'm, I'm not Nobody wants him I'm, there. I'm not happy at this. Mm. But I just wanted to speak to the fact that it would be unfair to crystallize the success of out of this game so far in boxing and not talk about Tony Konegachi. Oh, yeah. yeah, the coach has been massive. He's been around. An Olympian. He's I an mean, Olympian as well. Been He's there, put done his that. body, mind, and soul into this boxing. Even when it wasn't working out, he still stayed true to it. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy for him, and congrats to him. So okay. Far. Well, let's uh, move on, leave boxing behind, and also tell you that uh, the match is also being played in the women's... Uh, uh, in the women's final of the women's football final at the Africa Games. Don't forget that uh, it is the under-20 national teams of these two countries being represented right now as it stands the game between Nigeria and Ghana I think should have kicked off by now. Uh, the final currently going on, the third place game between Senegal and Uganda uh, also took place earlier on but it is Nigeria versus Ghana in the women's under-20 final they started that match, yes, yes, we can confirm that game has started. It's currently goalless right now. I will also bring you the results of the third place game played earlier on between Senegal and Uganda. Yes, that's it there on your screen. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, that's how it is. Uh, it finished in favor of Uganda, uh, winning 6-5 on penalties. Uganda have had a brilliant competition, uh, yeah. Wale. Yeah. They got to the uh, final of the men's uh, event, got to the world of the female, with women's event as well. Is it that the rest of Africa took their eyes off Uganda, or Uganda just was well, just exceptional? Yeah, I think it's just um, a flash in the pan. I, I, I credit to Uganda. But this is just um, a freak. Let me just, let me, let me, let me, yeah. let me, let's just something there. What, yeah. what about just, just a quick update. The game will start by 9.30, that's 8.30, at okay. uh, 9.30 p.m. Okay. Nigerian time, the finals, okay. Nigeria and Ghana. Okay. Uh, I hope well, the Ugandans don't come for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go anywhere near East Africa. You're also watching Game On here on New Central Television. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking motorsports and its future in Nigeria. Stick around. Thank you so much for staying tuned. You're still watching Game On here on News Central Television. It's time to talk motorsport now. It is one of the biggest, most lucrative, richest sports in the world. Formula One especially continues to garner a lot of attention globally. Uh, and of course, it's not only Formula One that's uh, part regarded as motorsports. There's uh, the World Rally Series as well. Uh, and of course, you know, the American also have their own version as well. But in Nigeria here, a lot of people have asked why has motorsport not hit the high notes that everybody expects it to hit? Well, for a country of 200 million people and incredible, incredible geography, it's a question that is worth 
exploring. And joining us in the studio today is Mr. Buki Feishiton. He is the uh, founding partner of the x Cart Race Series. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Very it's much. an absolute pleasure. So but let's, let's start by talking about what exactly is the x Cart Race Series. Okay, so the x Cart Racing um, Series is the premier um, racing series where we are racing um, 200cc off-road race carts at two racetracks, both in Chagamu and um, Ondo Ilaramoki. So we have two, um, so we have quite a number of them and we have race teams that are coming with between um, four to um, six race members per team and they sort of basically enter the race to, um, to race the, the carts really. Mm. So it's like a roll cage, semi roll cage cart, right? Okay. And it has, um, you know, variable shocks in front and static shocks at the back and they're 200 cc and the reason why we sort of there's a reason why we decided to go this model because we believe that this is the best place to start with the development of motorsports that will be sustainable. So the x -Cat race series is um, running through the year. So it's okay. seven races in the year. Seven races, same seven location races. or different locations? No, two, it's basically two locations. So we have okay. two racetracks, you know. There's the Smoking Hills racetrack at Ondo, yeah. Laramoki, Laramoki. Yeah. And, the, and the first racetrack is um, the Walk and Play um, Race Arena, which mm -hmm. is at Shagamo. Um, just right after Shion at Oshoba. Okay, so yeah. the, the major question that yes. I want to ask is yes. that who are the people who are, who are these racers? Is it just adrenaline junkies or is it the typical corporate types or is it anyone off the street? Who are the people who are, so, so it, who it's, are participating? It, it's, it's a combination of everyone, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I have been in the, um, should I say, the motorcycle space or the superbike space or um, the motorsport space for okay. over 20 years. x cat is actually... Um, 20 years in planning, mm -hmm. right? Even though we are just rolling out the series last year, it took a lot of work to, for us to get to this point. What I mean by that is um, several different racing models have been, start, have been tried in the, in the past, really. We, we've had races that have happened in Benin. We have yeah, car the races, motorcycle, motorcycle uh, races. Uh, uh, Osa, exactly, yes. you know. So what we have found out is that those races or how they sort of um, started have, were not sustainable. So it's the reason why at this moment, really, there's, um, you know, we have two partners coming together, which is Walk and Play and Metallic Horses, to actually put their um, backing behind the XCAT race series. And the goal here is to make sure we sort of run the race in this much sustainable manner, because the, the opportunities are huge. Um, there's, 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 there's the opportunity for um, university development of STEM fields. There's a hospitality angle to mm. it. There's the... And um, world science, technology, engineering, and so basically, you're, you're so developing a brand new ecosystem that for motorsports. Yes, exactly. Mm. That's basically what we are trying to do, and we believe that this is the right point to start because um, we don't in Nigeria we don't particularly have too much experience with with racing and on tarred roads and all that. Hence, it's the reason why we are starting with the cross cuts. It's the reason why we are also using the off road tracks mm. and is also the reason why because uh, safety is very important to us and um, what matters to us much more is that every participant from the spectators to the racers to the sponsors and um, they come and have a should i say a full experience a full inclusive and exclusive experience immersive where, yes really. yes you know yes that, that is immersive and that people can actually go back home and they can sort of you know say you know what i would like to um you know be a racer in the future but we have to start in such a way where it has to be sustainable. The previous models that have been done in the past, right, they were not sustainable. That is why they all went and they mm. sort of basically died. Okay. But this with, this, with the model that we have right now, we think the entry point is good for everyone to come in. And it's exciting. It's fun. And we are also putting quite a bit of um, funding behind it. And okay. we're also hoping that, you know, stakeholders within the um, Nigerian economy will see an opportunity to come and use the platform as well to, um, you know... Sponsorship, basically. Sponsorship, yes, exactly, mm. sponsorship. But then it, it sort of promotes the sport. And there's no limit. It's a case of where you could have teenagers get, in, get, get engaged and get involved, and you could also have basically adults get involved. So there's, there's quite a number of angles that... So there's pretty much of, no age limit to regarding participation? Uh, well, right now, really... Or you must for, for probably be like, in, according to FRS, you must have a driver's license, well, you must be 18 uh, and above. Well, for, <laughs> yes. If, well, that, that is one part, but also we have a program that we are developing for teenagers. Ah. We are talking about people between the ages of 14 to 18, mm. really. I mean, those that are, if they started driving, they probably just started driving, mm. you know, but there's also a space for, should I say the adults, there's also the space for industries that are looking to just I mean, have a, 
a time out to go and, you know, you know, get some adrenaline through their system mm. and significantly relax. You okay. know, because if you race, it's, it's sort of like a way to sort of relieve stress, mm. you know. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't know where to really start from because if I start, I, I mean, I would just yeah, be spend the whole day talking yeah, about you've, it. You've definitely you know? shown tremendous passion for this yes. sport, by the, by the way. Well, I'm yes, sure thank you. you guys have other questions as well. Wally, oh, please. Oh, yeah. I, I understand Philip Garner is coming through. Oh, yeah. So, how big of a deal is that? I know um, that is one of the best um, around. So, um, yes. how important is that for us? And um, there's also the tendency to see this as an elitist thing. Well, um, more the sport, you know, so that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, golf is elitist. It's yeah, polo too. You know, polo as well. You know, but what is mm -hmm. the general outlook for x in Nigeria? Is it elitist or is it for all comers? It is promising. They are still, you can't particularly say, oh, it's elitist or it's, um, you know, for the commoners. Mm -hmm. But there's a space for everyone. everyone. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I, I wouldn't like to use that word because, see, there, we have participators. We have... We have sponsors. We have spectators. Yeah, technical we have, teams. We I mean, the, the mechanics teams, who are you know, working on all these you know, cars so, as well. So, so if you look at it this way, you know, I mean, we import a lot of our cars, right? Um, or most of the car manufacturers generally, they all assemble their cars. But the truth about it is, what you don't, what a lot of people don't really understand, I, I don't mean by you when I say you, what people don't, don't see is that a lot of the things that we see in our engines today, V4, V6, V2, mm, yeah. V12 engines, a lot of them actually get tested on the racetrack first mm. before they get rolled Rolled into production. commercially, yeah. You understand? And if we truly are serious about developing our own economy inclusively, we have to also have an angle that enables the populace to sort of enjoy our development path. Uh, I think that's where you, you that's where the R and D that you were talking about. Yes. That's where it comes into play. A yes. lot of these play, uh, students in uh, engineering departments, technical schools, yes, they exactly. can also get involved as well. Yes. Table, you're nodding. You have a question. Yeah, oh, um, yes, I was going to ask. I mean, yes. he also talked about the fact that the cars are not made here. They are the carts, carts, the carts itself. Mm, yes. Um, I've seen Safari Race okay. in um, Uganda, Kenya. Kenya. Mm. Go on. Yes. Are there plans to develop from the s cart into what uh, we see in the Safari angle? Yes, it's not on the normal well, road. It's pretty much mo road. motocross rally. Motocross okay. rally. So, okay, so so, um, so there's a reason why we chose this cart particularly. They are simple. It's a frame, wheels, and an engine at the back. Mm. Oh. It has to be simple enough for the simple mind and the intelligent mind to be able to comprehend putting it apart and putting it back together. Oh. Or somebody, I mean, the, the cats are so simple that I think that we can just get any particular person that is uh, mechanically inclined to mm. sort of basically fashion the parts and get an engine from maybe a 200cc motorcycle or a 200cc kekenape or a 200cc vehicle. Or we could even get maybe a company like Nord or Innocent or mm. whatever it's got to actually build us a 200cc engine and we just mount it on the frame. The, it's, it's simple. If, I mean, if you look at it generally, it's just, it's just basically a cage. And the whole idea is that, you know, it has to be simple. The entry has to be... Um, the word affordable and attractive, mm. you understand, to both the creme de la creme of society and also the general masses okay. as well. Okay, so uh, you have an event coming up pretty soon. Want to oh, tell yes. us about that? Oh, yes. Okay, so we have our next event is actually happening on the 30th of, um, on the 30th of March. It's, oh, okay. Next okay, weekend. just a few days. Yeah, okay. just, just, just a few days. Weekend, to the yeah. Yeah. And it's happening at the Ondo Auto Rally. Okay. Right, and there's a couple of races that is happening, but one of the key major events is the x -Cat racing series mm. and our plan we are going to have 10 race teams having 10 different race cars on that day and each race day and the whole idea is the whole team is, they are all going to be racing for the prize one of the things as well that we did for this series is because it has to be sustainable um it has to be backed with money mm. so we the sponsors and the promoters we decided to say okay whatever it is we have to do we have to back it up with some incentive to ensure that people are always encouraged to actually come and race and when you race you only don't just leave with a cup and a, and a medal, but you also leave with something for your race team. That's to prize money? Look for, yes, exactly. Okay. To look forward towards the next race team. And what we, we, we were actually fortunate. The first race that happened in February at the Work and Play Race Arena, we gave um, race prizes to um, the winners, first, second, and third. And the next um, race that we we're having in Ilara Monkey, we actually got some funding from um, a foundation, um, MAO funding, and that helped us actually double... Um, the race win prize. Mm. And the goal is that um, we, are, we want to develop the sports 
And to develop the sport, we have to also be able to encourage the racers and, and the participants. And also put on excellent incentives yes, for people excellent incentive who want to generate. participate and yes. who want to even watch, come and yes, watch. Yes, exactly. Okay. We are thinking of building future racing drivers. We want to get to the point where we see people see a career in motor racing. Mm. We want to have the next Nigerian Lewis Hamilton and all that. Okay. Our model is fashioned after F1, but it's just off-road and it's basically cars. And our races are like 35 to 45 laps, mm. right? And each racetrack, the Work and Play Race Atlanta racetrack is 1.3 kilometers in length. You know, it has four straights and um, six curves. And the, um, the Smoking Hills racetrack at Ondo has basically, I think it has about seven straights and eight corners. Okay. And the goal is that, and so that means each one of them, 1.6 to, so we are going within about 50 kilometers, you understand, through the whole race. And mm. it's going to be intensive because you're going to basically have to deal with the elements as well. Okay. There are pit stops. There are, you know, there, there's mm. just... And there are, of course, the undulating terrain as well. Yes, yes so that, exactly. So it's a really <laughs> exciting, really challenging. So yes. we'll definitely be keeping our eyes uh, oh, on, uh, on the X-Cut Race Series coming yes. up uh, Easter weekend, end of this month. Uh, Mr. Bukish Feishetan, thank you so much for coming oh, thank through. Thank you so much for having me. Talking passionately about the sport. And hopefully oh, we'll be getting you. you more on the show quite regularly to okay. talk more about this car as it continues to develop. Yes. And hopefully probably talk about even the future of motorsport racing in Nigeria. Thank you so yes. much for your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank okay, you so, so you've been uh, you watching, so you should watching Game On. We'll be speaking with Mr. Buki Feishetan, who is the founding partner of the X-Card uh, race series that is happening here in Nigeria. Uh, her next event comes up at the end of this month. We'll be keeping tabs on that as well right here on Game On. We'll take a short break of return. It's football all the way. Thank you for staying tuned. You're still watching Game On here on New Central Television. It's time to talk football now. And we start with the MPFL, where the authorities have come down hard on Gombe United MPFL side. Well, they've been ducked three points and three goals uh, for on the unruly behavior of their fans. Supporters of the club assaulted match officials during the MPFL match day 26 encounter against Aqua United last weekend. And in addition to the points deduction, the MPFL also imposed a total fine of 3 million naira on the club, made up of 1 million each for failure to provide adequate and effective security and for throwing objects onto the field of play and compensatory payments to the four match officials at 250,000 naira each. And Gobi United's home stadium, the Pantami Stadium, will also be closed to fans uh, for the next three home games. I'm guessing uh, that will be close, that close to fans of Gobi United because Doma United also play there as well. So, uh, Gumi United have exactly 40 hours to accept or appeal the sanction, and uh, it's really dicey for them considering the fact that they are swimming in relegation waters. Well, moving on very quickly, and uh, it's a new series that we want to start on the show. We'll be talking to some of the key players in MPFL clubs, and tonight we're launching this series uh, with uh, Abdul, uh, Abdullah Lawal, defensive midfielder with Shooting Stars Football Club. He's a toast of the fans, and he joins us live now from Ibadan. Uh, Abdullah, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us on Game On. You're welcome. Good evening. No, you're welcome. Thank you so much. So, uh, you, you are regarded as one of the finest prospects in the Nigeria Professional Football League, a defensive midfielder by excellence, according to fans of your club. How does it feel, you know, wearing the colors of one of Nigeria's most historic clubs, Shooting Stars Football Club, hearing the fans always chanting your name? I, I really want to know the emotions going through your mind every time you, you walk out in that famous blue kit. I was very happy because this is my first experience. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go on, go on, go on. Yeah, this is my first, oh, this is my second MPFL side. I started from Abia Warriors. It was very hectic for me, but I faced a lot at Abia Warriors, but I thank God for life. And I mm. pushed my career. I met um, our coach, Coach Benga Gumbote, and he encouraged me a lot. Mm. So how, how would you describe I playing for Benga Gumbote? I mean, he's regarded as one of the finest tacticians in, in Nigeria. He's coached multiple club sides uh, everywhere. How would you describe playing under him? He's a tactician coach. He wants everybody to do well. He encourages us very well. And I'm trying my best. Mm. I've never experienced this kind of atmosphere in my life. And I thank the fans, the supporters, for bringing me this far. Mm. Well, well, they, are I, really, 
Well, Abdullah, I mean, what shooting stars say? have been consistently climbing the top of the log, and they're in the top six now. It, would you say it is a possibility that you might make a late play for one of the continental sports? Is it a strong possibility? Sure, sure, sure. We are, uh, there is possibility. That's our target. That's our target, to get the continental slots. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are trying, we are really trying to get the slots, and I pray God will help us. Okay, amen. And let's talk about uh, playing in the MPFL. How, 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 does, how does that stack up in your career? Uh, looking at who would you say is your toughest opponent that you ever faced individually and also club wise? Which club is the, club, the toughest club you face and who is the toughest opponent you ever faced in the MPFL? Uh, my toughest team that I face is Rivers United. Mm. Last two seasons at their home ground, I played for Abia Warriors. It's very, it's very interesting and hard for us to do, but I came in second half and I justified myself and I was amazed. We tried, we played 1-1 at the game. So that's my toughest game though. And it was played in the rain. It was raining that very day. Mm. Typical water football, yeah, the NPFL. Like mm. But what about your toughest opponent, individual opponent that you ever faced? Opponent? Yes. Remo Stars. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned Rivers United, they also mentioned Remo Stars, but uh, it, it's, it's yeah, fine. That's yeah, two, yeah. two top Stars, teams you faced. Mm. Yeah, oh. my first season at their home ground also. Okay, so final question from me. Again, uh, looking at your future now, if you get a big chance to move uh, abroad, either in Africa or Europe, um, will we be seeing you abroad anytime soon? Sure, sure, sure. That's the target. That's the dream. Mm. That's my dream. I have to see myself there very soon. And I pray God will help me. Mm. Okay, Abdullahi Lawal, uh, Shooting Stars Defensive Midfielder, thank you so much for your time. It's, uh, been, uh, well, it's good to have you on the show. Hopefully, we'll be watching your career from afar. Thank you so much, Abdullahi Lawal. Uh, guys, uh, don't forget that there's a friendly match. Two friendly matches coming up pretty soon for Nigeria. One tomorrow night against Ghana and another one against Mali uh, on Tuesday next week. Uh, a, Moroccan coach will be, a Moroccan referee will be in charge of the Nigerian game tomorrow. We'll be looking forward to that as well. And also, FIFA has also released the draws for the men's and women's football events at the Olympic Games as well. Group A has France, Canada, Colombia, and New Zealand in the women's tournament. Uh, they are also waiting for the Nigerian qualifier. The first Nigerian qualifier will join Spain, Japan, and Brazil, while the second African qualifier will also join the United States women's national team, Germany, and Australia. In the men's event, uh, Spain are in the mix as well. Uh, I beg about Egypt, they're in the mix. They'll be joining Spain and the Dominican Republic and facing a qualifier from the AFC, while uh, Morocco or uh, stacked up against Argentina uh, I qualify from Asia and Ukraine as well. Uh, guys, uh, it's been a very, very hectic show, but we really have to go. Many thanks to the guys behind the scenes who made this possible, and many thanks to Favo Itua who joined us on the show, Wale Adigun here as well. But before we go, let's tell you that in 2014, something incredible happened uh, in a boxing event. Croatia's Vido Lonkar sparked outrageous scenes at the European Youth Boxing Championships when he launched a vicious assault on the referee after losing his bout in Zagreb. Reb. Lonka was clearly unimpressed at the referee's decision to award the bout to his opponent, uh, that's uh, Algirdis Badulas of Lithuania, and he vented his fury by attacking the official, knocking him to the ground, continuing the assault uh, with a flurry of punches, but thankfully uh, he had to be dragged from the ring by his ankles before the referee was hurt uh, too badly, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's just incredible, the incredible scenes, the boxer unhappy at losing, assaulting the referee. His opponent fled quickly. Oh. Yeah, he didn't want to be any part of that, but um, it's... Let, let's tell all the Nigerian boxers today kept to school. <laughs> uh, I think I, we now know where Bright Osiris Samuel got his own inspiration from. Uh, many thanks to everyone who made this show possible, and many thanks to you for watching the show. Game On Mix return tomorrow on the station. On this station. My name is Babatunekweki. Wishing you a wonderful night. Bye-bye.